Okay, hello YouTube. Um, today I'm going to do kind of a fun video. I'm going to talk about the five worst openings in chess. So if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, uh, please go ahead and hit that like button and please hit subscribe. Um, and we'll just go ahead and keep this kind of content coming. So anyways, so I had a couple of criteria for the five worst openings in chess. So the first thing is it had to be a complete opening. So we're not just talking about like the five worst first moves in chess. We're talking about the five worst openings in chess. So it has to be an opening, and that opening has to have a name. So it has to have an actual name. Um, and then the, the, the second criteria was is that it had to be both objectively and subjectively bad. So that means that the computer hates it. It means that the engine is giving like plus one or plus two for whoever is playing against this opening or more. Um, and some of these are pretty bad. And and then the the second part is is it also has to be subjectively bad, which means that just about everybody that plays it is losing with the opening. So then finally, my third criteria for the five worst openings in chess uh, was that somebody or some people or somebody at some point has tried to convince me that these openings were okay. So it has to have people that actually believe that these openings are okay that are actually willing to play them. Um, in spite of the fact that they're both objectively and subjectively quite bad. Um, so those are the three criteria in order to make it into my top five, in order to make it into my top five Hall of Shame, uh, the, the, the five worst openings in chess that you can play both on a fundamental and a theoretical and a statistical level. So coming in at number five, we're going to pick on a d4 opening here, or a defense to d4 with black. is d4, knight f6, c4 and then this amazing attempt apparently at refuting d4 completely is a move b5 which is called the pyrenees gambit um and i'll be honest after we take this pawn i'm I'm not exactly sure what black has gained from this gambit um somebody that knows more about chess than me is gonna have to explain to me what the idea is here i mean it seems like kind of like a banco gambit but it's not like it's not a Banco Gambit. Like a Banco Gambit, I actually understand. Like like after, you know, C5, D5, and then B5, it that Gambit actually makes more sense to me. I, I'm getting the two open files, and but more importantly, I'm making white advances center, and I've gained a little bit of space with C5. Like, there's some logic to the Banco Gambit, but this Gambit, the, I can't I can't make heads or tails of this. There's There doesn't seem to be any logic to it. And as far as how this has gone in tournament practice, it seems to go very, very well for uh, White. White seems to win the vast, vast majority of the games. I don't, I don't think in my research I was finding any wins with Black, except for one odd win where somebody won a simultaneous exhibition game against Kasparov with the Black pieces, um, which is why this isn't higher up the list. And but it's also just. Like maybe maybe we can't count simul games for any opening, <laughs> so so that's maybe just another thing. So, but otherwise, it would have been higher up on the list if it wasn't for that um, abnormality. And the, this next one also would have made it higher up on the list if it wasn't for a certain abnormality as well. Um, so I mean, I can't dismiss the fact that Kasparov lost to it, even though this was a simul. So I can't put it at the bottom of my list, but it's still on the list. So this next one. Again, would have been higher up the list if it wasn't for a similar uh, a similar abnormality in the statistics. So it happens in the King's Gambit. So it happens after e4, e5, and then we have f4, and then takes, and then we have the bishop's opening, and then queen h4 check, king, king f1, and then this amazing move. This is called the Brian Counter Gambit, b5. And, I mean... After bishop takes b5, the winning percentage is just incredible for white. <laughs> but of course it should be. Black has gambited a pawn in exchange for gambiting a pawn. And of course this was the move that was played in the famous um, Immortal game. You know, the game that was supposed to be so perfect that, that you know, it would live on forever. And of course that always bothered me because it featured, you know, probably some of the worst opening play we've ever seen from anybody playing the black pieces. So how does that make this game immortal, in my opinion? I don't understand. You know, anything looks beautiful when you're playing against, you know, zero opposition. 
Um, and the, again, th there, there was this oddity here that, you know, I consider Morphe probably one of the greatest players that ever lived. So this would have made it higher up on the list. Like it would have made it up to number three or number four, a lot like the Pyrenees Gambit, except there was this really strange statistical oddity where, where Paul Morphe played the white pieces against this once, and he continued very oddly with the move bishop to d5. He actually declined the gambit, because I guess Morphe likes to play his own gambits. He doesn't like to accept other people's gambits. And, uh, you know, then c6 got played, Morphe retreated, and somehow Morphe lost with white. So otherwise this would have made it higher up on the list. But if you accept the gambit, if you take the, the pawn that they gave you for zero compensation, if you accept the Brian counter gambit, your odds of winning are really, really high. Uh, because apparently this gives up a pawn for, for absolutely um, zero reason. So, okay, so that's uh, number four. So so moving on to to um, number three. Uh, we're, we're moving on to number three. And, and I think this one, I think, I, I do rank this as number one as far as the worst first moves in chess go. This is the worst first move in chess that you can possibly play. Just if we're talking about first moves, it's number one. But I'm putting it at number three because there are actually uh, two openings that I consider um, worse than this. But it's the grob. <laughs> so G4, I'm putting it as number three. So number one, this is probably statistically the worst first move that you can play. White scores something like, you know, 33% with this as, as white. It's really, really bad. Um, it, it's just about the worst first move you can play. And the problem with it is, is that everybody that plays uh, like just D5 and, and the majority of people play this, and then c6, it eliminates any tricks that white can play for, like especially at the master level. There's basically no tricks that you can play for after black has uh, just blockaded your bishop. And of course, there are people, there are proponents of the grab. There's people that love the grab. That's why it made it so high up the list, because there's people that love this opening. But both subjectively and objectively, this opening is, is absolutely terrible. Uh, once they block the diagonal, and there's really just nothing to play for. Um, after h3 and then e5, um, white scores 32%. And after c4 and then simply pawn capture c4, white is scoring 33%. And there's no tricks. So there's no tricks. There's nothing fancy. There's no nothing weird that white can do if black just knows this much theory. So if black knows three moves of theory, you're pretty much dead. That's all they need to do to make your grob really really horrible so the grab comes in at number three but then these okay so the next two the next two are really bad we got number two and number one coming up so so coming in at number two and this is pretty bad and after i show you this you're gonna be like how is this only number two you're gonna be like this this is really bad so coming in at number two uh e4 f5 that's right, this is only coming in at number two, right? There's one worse than this, so you gotta stick till the end of the video. This is only coming in at number two. E4, F5, this is called the Duras Gambit, and we can play E takes F5, and then we can follow up with one of two moves here <laughs> that get played apparently quite often. Um, we can play King F7, uh, which I've heard called the Mouse Se Sedong variation, and <laughs> um, we can play uh, Knight F6, now, to say that this is both objectively and subjectively terrible um, is is kind of an, an understatement um, in the least. So, so like I've got I've got games here like after knight f six d four, we would just play bishop d three to hold this pawn, and I mean both objectively, white is quite a bit better here. White's going to be up a clean pawn with a better position, a better center. And a better everything, but also subjectively, white wins the vast majority of the games. The only games that I found where where black managed to win, which there were a handful of them, there was like huge rating disparities, like a twelve hundred playing a two thousand or something like that. Like it was crazy how unlikely it was that black was actually going to win from here. And then of course after king f seven, I mean we can actually play queen h five. It's not a trap. Like you would think if they're going to play f five and King f7, that queen h5 check would be a trap, but it's not a trap. We can just play it. And then after g6, fg6, king g7, gh7, knight f6, queen g5, king f7, bishop d3, none of this is a trap. White is actually just winning. So so all of the obvious moves that white can play 
white is just winning and then the objective analysis of this is something like plus five or plus six for white so i mean this is just insane and this is only the second worst opening in chess so get ready for number one so number one and who knows maybe you've actually tried number one number one the worst first the worst opening in in chess that's ever been played in terms of both statistics and in terms of its objective um, uh, merit, which is like how bad it is, right? So it's e4, e5, and this is after knight f3, the move f6. And that's right, the Damiano's defense. This is what that's called. It's called the Damiano's defense. It has a name, and it actually has a handful of proponents. And what's upsetting about um, the handful of proponents is that for a while it was thought that some of these variations were survivable. This was, of course, before computers just completely blew that out of the water. And it's been completely confirmed that, that the Damianos is, in fact, completely losing in every line. So let, let's just go through it just for fun. Like, how bad is it? So if you don't know the refutation to the Damianos, it's just we take the pawn. We play knight takes e5. And um, after knight takes e5, uh, pretty much everybody's winning. I mean, like, in my personal database, I have a 100%. Like, I, I, I just, in my database, it's uh, just, like, masters and above. And it's, it's a 100% score for white. So, so knight takes e5. So the main idea is if they take it. Like, if they play f takes e5, what we're doing is we're playing queen h5 check, which hits the king and hits the pawn. And then after they block with a move like g6, we would win the rook. So... A lot of people thought they could get away with moving their king up, like king e7, but we're just winning after here, check, and if they move the king, we've got this is mating. And we know that this is forced mate. Computers confirm that this is forced mate. So there were a group of people a long time ago that thought after bishop to c4 that they could um, play d5. And I actually had several strong players inform me that, oh no, this might be survivable. Maybe the Damianos is okay because we can play d5. And then after bishop d5, king g6, and then they would point at the board and go, okay, what are you going to do now? As if they'd come up with some brilliant concept. And apparently if you just play h4 and then h5, um, apparently the move is, and stop and pause the video and see if you can find it, but, okay, so the move is bishop takes b7. It's just game over. We're, we're just threatening to win the rook. And if they take, we're mating this king. So, like, if bishop takes b7, queen f5, king h6, and then d3 or d4, take your pick. Um, this is going to be game over. We're just getting checkmated here. This is this is a wrap. So, like, you'd have to play g5, and then we could even just play bishop g5, and then that's going to fork king and queen. And that would be completely lost in every possible way so we know that marching the king out doesn't work but of course there's people that are like oh no we can you can still play the damianos the damianos can't be totally unsound what happens if after knight takes e5 we were to play queen e7 and try to get the pawn back well actually i've got six games on my database that went knight f3 queen takes e4 and then bishop e2 and out of all those six games white won them all <laughs> so that's how bad this is white scored 100 percent which actually makes a lot of sense. Like, white doesn't have any problems with his development or attacking the center of the board. We could continue with d4, c4. We can continue with knight c3, gaining yet another tempo. So white is effectively up about three tempo here, and then he's going to castle cleanly as well. But white is actually maybe even up more than three tempo. White might be up four tempo for nothing because this knight can't develop naturally, so it can't go to f6. So white's probably, I think, to be fair... White's actually up four tempo. So it, to it totally makes sense that if you just say, hey, let's start the game and here, have four free moves, that White would probably win the vast majority of these games. I was actually kind of shocked that it's like 100%, but I mean, the numbers should be pretty high. So there you have it. The, the worst um, opening in chess, according to me, now this is just my opinion, is the Damiano's defense. So that's the worst opening in chess, and that was my top five. So this is this is my top five list, the worst openings in chess. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found this video entertaining, and um, I hope that you uh, learned something about chess that will help you in your own games. Uh, thank you very much for watching.